finally, one of the most requested games is being covered here on Battle of the Ports. This is Mario Brothers. Released in 1983 by Nintendo and designed by Shigeru Miyamoto and Gunpei Yokoi, Nintendo's chief engineer. Italian brother Mario and his twin brother Luigi exterminate creatures emerging from sewers by knocking them upside down and kicking them away. While people associate this game with the Mario franchise, it originally began as a spin-off from the Donkey Kong series. In the game, you gain points by defeating multiple enemies consecutively, and can participate in a bonus round to gain more points by collecting coins. There are only four main enemies in Mario Bros., which emerge from the pipes. A fifth enemy, the Fireballs, fly around the screen in an attempt to fry you. They come in two variants red and green. The green ones are faster but disappear after a short period of time, while the red ones bounce about and don't disappear until they are hit from below. Later in the game, icicles form under the platforms and at times on top of the pipes and fall loose. September 9th in 1983 saw the Famicom release of Mario Brothers. The US and Europe wouldn't see this until 1986. For a very early port, this isn't too bad at all. The main gameplay is there and it does look like the arcade game at first glance. There are many graphical differences mind you, which are fixed in the later Famicom disc release. Intro sequences to each stage are missing and the game feels more difficult overall. Still, despite these changes, this was a great port at a time when home systems really came close to their arcade big brothers. Nineteen eighty three saw Mario Brothers come to the Atari twenty six hundred and it's crap. This is quite a shame as many twenty six hundred games tend to look terrible but play really well. Mario on the other hand looks okay but plays nothing like it should. The jumping mechanics are so wrong. They are floaty and often stop when you land on a platform. The jumping arc is off too, making it difficult to judge when to jump to an upper platform. Also in 1983, Atari released another port of Mario Brothers, but this time on the 5200. This is a big improvement over the 2600 in the looks department, but still doesn't look as good as the Famicom version or play close to it. Again, Mario's jump feels very floaty in this port.
Atari Soft brought Apple II users Mario Brothers and amazingly, it plays better than any port on an Atari system. While feeling a little slow, the jump mechanics are more in line with the original arcade release. They're still floaty and Mario jumps quite high, but the jumping arc seems to be correct. It's a shame the same can't be said about the farting audio. There are two parts of Mario Brothers to the Commodore 64. Let's start off with this US release from 1986. As you can see, it looks fairly good and sounds close to the arcade game too. It even plays reasonably well. Sadly, the port is missing the stage intros like all other versions, and there's no animation on the platforms when you hit them. Still, despite these flaws, this isn't too bad. In 1987, Ocean released a port of Mario Brothers, and of course, with it being Ocean, there's a strong guarantee of a crap game. Ocean do not disappoint in providing the crap. Straight from the god awful loading and title screen, we can see this is going to be bad. But how bad you can never guess until you play this mess. For a start, Mario controls like he is on ice. I'm serious when I say he does not stop moving once you let go of a direction. He keeps moving! Not only that, but the input lag is terrible. I'd go as far as saying this is unplayable. Nineteen eighty seven was the year of crap as Ocean brings us the Amstrad CPC port, yet again with an embarrassing title screen. What is wrong with Mario in this version? He looks like some old dude wearing a flat cap. He controls like some old dude too. Sluggish and unresponsive, and yet again, it seems Mario has stood in some sloppy crap as he can't stop sliding all over the place. Holy crap, this is even worse than the Amstrad port, despite being developed by the same company, Choice. What sort of choice did Ocean have to choose these Muppets to program a game? Probably the choice of paying them little money. This port is just broken. Horrid controls with inertia that takes over your movement, horrible collision detection that at times doesn't even work, and buggy as hell. This crashed three times on me while playing. Nineteen eighty eight saw the release of the Atari seventy eight hundred port. 
Now keep in mind this is 5 years after the Famicom version and just look at how shit this is. No wonder Atari didn't become popular outside the US. Not only does this look worse than a 5 year old game, but it sounds awful and plays nothing like it should. Six years after the Atari 5200 version was released, the Atari 8-bit line of home computers got a port in 1989. And guess what? Yeah, it's basically the exact same game that was on the 5200. Takita Mario Brothers, basically Mario Brothers are back, was released onto the Famicom Disk System November 30th, 1988. This is an updated remake of the original NES conversion of Mario Brothers. While the original NES conversion, developed in 1983, was quite accurate to the arcade version, many compromises were made in order to fit the game into a limited amount of memory available on the cartridge. These compromises include the size of enemies, the instruction cutscenes, and ice scores which form from the top platform later on in the game. In addition to the graphics improvements, Mario and Luigi gained the ability to change directions slightly in mid-air, and the game took advantage of its disc format by letting you register your name and save the top 5 high scores. Let's take a look at all those versions of Mario Brothers running side by side. 